I'm Amy Waters Burns and I'm head of the Lounge Faculty in Brynhalvrin and this is Lois Burns who is head of um, QCH for English. And um, we're coming at a slightly different angle because we didn't actually apply for funding to be part of the um, Silk Gun Initiative project. What happened was we um, decided we wanted to get together as faculties English and MFL and Welsh and we invited all our Silk Gun to come in to do an insert just for a morning to sort of generate some ideas. So really we haven't got some research around now that because we're coming at it from a different angle. Um, so for our set premieres that discussed with the triplicity issues, we will be showing new strategies we've developed as a whole school level to raise both the profile, uh, profile and standards of literacy. Um, we came in as a, a very much together because we wanted those pupils to have strategies developed in English that they would see in MFL and then um, This was one strategy that we came up with and we came up with the name ourselves with help from the pupils, so we didn't want to seem too down with the kids using wall book um, like Facebook. But basically, the way it works is um, in English we use it. So if a pupil creates um, some impressive descriptive writing um, or uses some really juicy vocabulary, we whack it on wall book, get it up on the wall, and then other people can use it then um, and see how brilliant it is. So we celebrate um, the success of, of their, their literacy skills in that way. Um, but Katie Llewellyn, who's an MFL teacher, is going to ex hopefully going to explain to you how it works in MFL. All classrooms and languages have a wall book. This is where pupils can post new phrases or new words they found in a dictionary. It encourages the lower school to use phrases that perhaps the sixth form have found, or also the sixth, sixth form can also use phrases from the lower school. We also have an idiom of the week in French, Spanish and Welsh and we challenge the pupils to use these in their lessons. The idiom of the week this week for Spanish is mi media naranja, which is my other half, and the French one for this week is chercher media quatre heures, to overcomplicate things. Um, <coughs> this project, it was a common project across the faculties, MFL, Welsh and English. Um, and basically what we did, um, we delivered a series of lessons that were started um, in the English faculty. Um, and we chose an, an Amnesty International campaign, Kites for Women's Rights, um, and we basically, in the English lessons, discussed with the girls what was happening um, to women and girls in Afghanistan um, before and during the Taliban rule and um, subsequent to the fall of the Taliban. Um, I gave them a PowerPoint, they learned about it, they discussed it, and then they were invited to design a kite um, on which they sort of supported women's rights in Afghanistan. Um, what we also had on the wall as well, though, as you can see, are some key words in English, then um, in Welsh, French and Spanish as well. And the point of this as an English teacher was to get pupils to realise that their literacy skills are their responsibility to use in other lessons as well. Um, because I found that they tend to um, put their learning in English into a compartment and then go off to another subject and, and not use it again. Um, and as an anecdote, it came out in one of our um, joint meetings with MFL. And one of the, my colleagues in, in MFL said, well, you know, the girls don't know what a noun is. Well, they, they do. They just don't know what a noun is outside of their English classroom, um, you know, or outside of their, their French or Welsh classroom and inside their English classroom. So this was the point of, of this project. Um, and now I'm going to, I think I'm going to watch myself, which is really embarrassing. I haven't seen it yet, so at least I'm not wearing the same outfit, I don't think. <laughs> I'm not, no. What we're going to be th doing today is thinking about human rights issues in Afghanistan, okay, particularly women's human rights. This okay. Kites for Women's Rights project was inspired by a triple literacy inset that the English faculty had along with uh, modern foreign languages and Welsh. And basically it was thought up to encourage pupils to, to view literacy as a cross-curricular entity rather than just limited to their English lessons. So it was based on an Amnesty International campaign and I think it was important for the girls to have a subject matter which gave them some kind of moral or ethical lessons and, and something they could really get to discussing, which they, they do. And also, with the triple literacy aspect of it and using different languages, it's important for them to see that no matter what language we speak in the world, we all deserve basic human rights. I think it works really well because it encourages pupils to view the links between different languages and gives them quite challenging vocabulary in both English and their other languages. And I think for the languages departments, it was interesting to get the girls talking about something that perhaps wouldn't come up in ordinary MFL and Welsh lessons, whereas in English we're often discussing these types of issues. 
each pair or three will be given a kite template, okay? And using some key vocabulary, which I'm going to put up onto the board, and I'm going to give you on sheets, I would like you to express your opinions about women's rights in Afghanistan on your kite, all right? I want you to make sure it's eye-catching, colourful and clear. But why are we doing this? Oh, because kite flying is a hobby in Afghanistan, right? They, they love to fly kites, and women are allowed to make the kites, but very often they're not allowed to actually fly them. So our kite is a, a show of solidarity and support for the women of Afghanistan, okay? Now, during your discussions and writing on your kite, you may wish to use some key words in English, super. I would like you to challenge yourselves, please, and try to use some key words in French, in Welsh, or in Spanish, or all three, okay? So I would like to hear some other languages in this classroom. I would certainly like to see them written on your kites. You can use any images you like, the inky finger, a dove of peace, anything, okay? To show your support for women and girls in Afghanistan. The finished product then were kites using the target vocabulary from all the languages that they learn at Bryn Havrim. Um, one thing that we were looking at as well was in the joint um, insert was we talked about dictionaries and using dictionaries and that the children get confused and don't know what to do. So we thought we'd make dictionaries interesting. So we came up with a snazzy name called Dictionary Divas to teach in all girls' school. So, um, and we actually have developed this and produced the resources across all the languages. Um, and we go to the LRC, the library, where we have um, a session where they sit on the bean bags and they just explore the different meanings and what they mean. So it's very much independent learning. So we'll show you that. Have you read any Mindy Edrich at Dictionary Divas? We're going to be having a look at Dictionary Divas, okay? Gwaith at Gedar Gaelia did on. To start with, can anybody tell me why dictionaries are so important? What did dictionary Dictionary have? Divas was created as a result of a Silt Cymru inset day focusing on triple literacy. As a department of languages, we decided that the focus on dictionary use within our school would be something that all pupils would benefit from. Uh, the pupils appear to be a lot more confident now after having a Dictionary Diva session. The quality of their work appears to be on a completely different level due to accuracy of spellings and grammar and punctuation. I'm safe, Snag. In English, can you give me an adverb to describe swimming or horse riding, please? What kind of adverb would we use to describe swimming or horse riding? Quickly. Quickly. And quickly, as well, can that quick or quickly? The pupils seem to be more independent learners through the introduction of this dictionary diva strategy, and also they've, they've learned transferable skills that they're able to use across the curriculum. Hi, Ian. Okay. Now, Freddie, I'd like you with your partner. He ask of any browsing. To com write a sentence for me using your verb and your adverb. Joy Levin, you give me some sentence starters first of all. What I like. Diolch and what else can we have? During the activity, I asked the pupils to focus on verbs, adverbs, adjectives and nouns that maybe they hadn't previously used, as I find pupils have a stock of words that they use regularly where they're not really learning any new words. And I just feel that a lot of the pupils have taken away from the activity a lot of adjectives, adverbs that they wouldn't have necessarily used without having a dictionary to refer to. Diane, think of the words you've taken away from this today just by having a flick through the dictionary. Yeah? The next thing that we looked at was introducing new vocabulary. We're very conscious of introducing the vocab, doing the core repetition. We wanted actually the pupils to take on their own learning and look at the language patterns and look at how they can identify words themselves, but be able to explain why so they're understanding their learning and able to share that. So one thing that we've developed is when we introduce the vocabulary is we don't give them what it means. They have to work it out themselves using the grammar rules from um, Spanish, French and Russian English. Okay then, chicas, vamos a hacer un ejercicio con los trabajos, ¿vale? Tenemos, ok, aquí tenemos cuatro columnas en español, francés, gales y inglés, ¿vale? Y tenemos que poner los trabajos en las 
columnas correctas. ¿Qué tenemos que hacer? What do you think we have to do, girls? Any ideas? Holly? We have to put the right words into the right columns in English, Spanish, Welsh and French. Perfect, good girl. Okay, the Triple Literacy Activity is a starter activity and it's designed, it was about jobs and it was designed basically to give them a flavour of all the different jobs in Spanish, French, Welsh and obviously English, with the end product being um, that they're able to write a piece, extended piece of writing on jobs, what they want to do in the future, what their parents are, that kind of idea. Um, we, can, we do it in lots of different topics and it's designed for pupils to look at um, the links between languages and look at cognates and look at grammar rules. It has an O. And that would be Spanish. Spanish. It's got an O. This would be... Mm -hmm. this yeah. Welsh for dentists. Did you say Spanish? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this one, France. See from the activity that they were really working on it and looking, looking at those rules and kind of pulling it apart. And um, it also helps with their spelling, I find, um, and just the range of, of vocabulary. So you know, going from architect today we did to carpenter to policeman to soldier. So it does give them a lot more vocab that they can use in their writing. Looking at this word, you all got it right, but how did you know that was Spanish, enfermera? What, how wasn't it French, Welsh? Why did you put it in that column, Megan? Um, because it's like a co cognate of like infirmary, and the A on the end is like the Spanish language. Coming on to this one, cartero, which is Spanish for postman, how did you know that? Because to me it doesn't look like a cognate, it isn't a cognate. Elise. Because we know that carta is a letter in Spanish, it kind of makes sense that it would be the postman. Brilliant. Fantastic. Oh, well done. And the next thing we looked at was to extend sentences because we really do have high standards in the languages and we don't just expect or just want one simple thing. We want to accept it and the pupils themselves are used to it. We wanted to introduce something <laughs> across the curriculum, I'm hoping, but mm. certainly across English and the languages. So we've um, introduced something called the ski slope when we say, how low can you go? So they're quite used to it when we put your scene in the middle, you just put one sentence on the board or even a word and they're just like, right, okay, how far can I actually go down? And the challenge is good, but it also supports the ALN pupils because they can decide how far they do actually want to go. So we try and push them, but we also give them alternatives to achieve what they can achieve. Tenemos una pregunta, ¿qué quieres hacer en el futuro? Elias, ¿qué significa esta pregunta aquí? ¿Sí? What do you want to do in the future? What do you want to do in the future? Ok, muy bien. Tengo una respuesta, ¿vale? Quiero ser profesora. ¿Entendáis? ¿Sí o no? Ok, ¿qué significa quiero ser profesora? ¿Sí? You're a teacher. Mm. Nili, quiero ser profesora. ¿Sí? You want to be a teacher. I want to be a teacher. Ok, so we've got... What do you think about this phrase? Pretty basic? Yeah? yeah? So I just want you to talk in parejas. How could you possibly improve it? What could we do? Off you go. Muy bien. Say why, muy bien. Utilizando por qué. So say why you would want to do that job. Muy bien. You could say where. Where. So where you actually would work. Fantastico. Muy bien. Opinions. Opinions. Can you give me an example? Useful. Useful, fun, good. Really good. Um, extensionary. Like, por ejemplo. Pienso okay. que. Pienso que, muy bien. Ideas, muy bien. Future tense, really good. Don't forget your tenses, okay? One more then. You could say when. When. What time? What time? So, en el futuro, yeah? Cuando tenga 18 años, muy bien. Okay, so the ski slope. So, it's basically try to encourage you to extend your phrases. Okay, mira. So, tenemos uh, quiero ser profesora. All happy what that means? Tell me what it means again. What does that phrase mean again? I want to be a teacher. I want to be a teacher. Muy bien. Ahora mira, ¿qué pasa? En el futuro, quiero ser profesora en un colegio. So, what have I done here? Meg? Um, I, want to be in a I want to be a teacher in a school. Good. What have I added? Oh, in the future. Good, so I put when, haven't I? In the future, I want to be a uh, teacher in a school. Muy bien. Now then, so I've got en el futuro, etc. En un colegio, porque sería divertido. ¿Sí? Uh, in the future, I'd like to be, I want to be a teacher because, in a school because it would be fun. It would be fun. Sería divertido. It would be fun. Muy bien. So... More extended phrase then. So the bit that's different here is I've got the same, I've just added a bit more. Y me encanta trabajar con los niños. Think about what a teacher does. Oh, yeah. I love working with 
children. Hey, fantastico, muy bien. So in the future, I want to be a teacher in a school because it would be fun, okay? And I love working with kids, children. Muy bien, chicas. And now my last one, see how long it is, okay? So I've added, I've kept some bits the same, but I've added, porque desde mi punto de vista sería divertido, porque... Desde, um, desde mi punto de vista. Yeah. In my opinion. In my opinion. Oh, close. From my point of view. Muy bien. From my point of view, it would be fun. I've kept that the same. Me encanta trabajar con los niños. Sin embargo, no me gustaría ser médica porque en mi opinión sería demasiado difícil. Could you perhaps do a little part of that? Um, however, Muy bien. I wouldn't like to be a because, in my opinion... Okay, fantastico. Could anyone do the last bit then? In my opinion, sería demasiado difícil. It would be... Difficult? Difficult. Too difficult. Fantastico. Okay, so do you get the idea that each level, we are doing what? Extending it more. We are extending it more. So you're going to start with a, uh, una frase básica como ese. Quiero ser profesora. So how do you think you're going to work on improving it? And um, the final thing that we're going to do and talk about is the awesome nine, um, which is set phrases and starters in Spanish, French and Welsh, and they don't change and in English, they don't change. They stay the same, and all that changes is the topic, material. So the pupils know that they always have, I am, I, I'm not, and they just mix together the topic. So it gives them confidence because they know it's always there and they can encourage to arrange our sentences to be used. Who can tell me what you can see on the board? You can see any of them about. Okay. Uh, a greater vocabulary. Greater vocabulary. What do we call this vocabulary? Question we've got. Um, awesome night. Awesome night. Fantastic. So, hello, Vanny. Hands up if you can remember using this awesome night. Are that hard? Right. So, if you know any of the sentence patterns, you can basically talk about absolutely anything and you can write in. Welsh. The idea of Awesome Nine came from an inset I attended. Yeah. Right. I selected nine sentences which I thought were accessible to the lower abilities but still stretch individuals. These easily adaptable sentence patterns were enforced over a number of lessons. The strategy has had an extremely positive effect on the students in my class. It enables pupils of all abilities to create extended pieces of writing through the use of nine basic sentences. With little practice, I found that pupils are able to adapt and extend these sentence patterns in order to be able to talk about a vast range of topics. It has worked extremely well with more reluctant learners in Key Stage 4. By encouraging them to learn this range of patterns, they are able to convey their opinion on a variety of subjects. In front of you now, you have a guide that new you have some new vocabulary. Demar topic new Demar topic new This is the new topic. Looking at this, could you those are the ideas that we're putting into practice at the moment and they're in place and they're working really well. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.